Today, we journey to Franklin, deep in the Huon Valley, to explore some of the beautiful wooden boats scattered throughout the area. Our hosts were the Wooden Boat Guild of Tasmania, and these two kids had such a fantastic time exploring all of the remnants of old boats, boats under restoration, and even, to quote Jeannie, a working pirate boat. When she's done, she'll make a really good pottering boat. Absolutely, I'm going to take, take a chopping and you will Pull up there. What's all right? For a long time, we've been waiting to go on Yukon, a beautiful Danish fishing catch that's been brought down to Tasmania and currently runs commercial cruises up and down the Franklin River. Um, so let's start with the boat just standing here on the deck. It's an old fishing trawler from the North Sea, in, oh, from Denmark, fished in the North Sea, built 1930. We found the boat in Denmark and restored her up there, but I can go into a bit more detail once we go below. But here she's 17.3 metres on deck, 24 metres low, 15 metres hard length, so a beam of 4.7 metres, a draft of 2.4 metres, a displacement of 60 tonnes. So there's a fair bit of boat underneath, <laughs> thankfully. Um, and we'll just take a wander down through. It's a catch rig, obviously, gaff rig catch with a yard, which is a bit of a hybrid. Uh, that kind of rig was common in Scandinavia, um, especially on coastal trading vessels, but very seldom on fishing catches. So there is a bit of a difference there. ton was her net tonnage so that bulkhead where the gentleman's standing there next to the mainmast that used to go right across the vessel and that was a watertight bulkhead um, whereas the one forward of that now is our collision bulkhead that's now the watertight bulkhead so your forecastle was forward of the mast there um, and you had a table four bunks and right up forward where our workshop is now in the forepeak was the galley so you can just imagine you know, punching into a strong head sea in the North Sea, miserable as buggery, and what are you cooking up? A big pot of fish head soup or something like that. So these people used to do it tough. This bulkhead just here, the midships bulkhead, that was a continuous bulkhead as well, and that used to be the entrance to the machinery space. So this is a, the first generation of Danish vessels that was built with an engine from conception. So they were called a haikuda, which means a shark, if you translate that. And it's not because they were catching shark, it's just that they were more efficient at catching fish. So they got this nickname. The first engine in this vessel weighed five tonnes and generated 65 horsepower, single cylinder Tuxum diesel. It was. So you can imagine it was almost like a steam engine. The second engine was a 85 horse Hunested diesel. And then the third one was an Alpha diesel. Uh, which we took out of it when we salvaged it, and that weighed seven and a half tons and had two cylinders and generated 180 horsepower. <laughs> Maximum RPM 360. <laughs> so it's just like a fantastic piece of machinery, and I would have loved to have saved it, but it took up half the boat and it had been underwater a couple of times with cylinder heads off, so the restoration cost was going to be more 
than a brand new six cylinder diesel which we put in, which takes up nowhere near the space of course. So the story of restoration started 1997. I was living in Copenhagen uh, and had been sailing and working on different ships around the world, so traditional vessels mainly, but also a bit of North Sea oil work and stuff like that, and discovered this vessel through a friend of mine. And um, she'd been salvaged the first time and the owners were pretty keen to get rid of it. They, they realised they had a lot of work ahead of them. I spoke to them, but they wanted way too much money for it. Six months later, um, it sunk again. They just couldn't, you know, it was sort of getting out of control. Um, it had a um, inch and a half submersible pump running constantly. Somebody unplugged it on the wharf uh, and she went down again. It happens, you know, and I mean, you people are all boat people. You understand the vulnerabilities. If you've got a hole in your roof, you get a wet carpet. If you've got a hole in your the foundations, you get a wet everything. So it's like time critical. So I actually ended up salvaging the vessel and paying a carton of beer for it and covering the cost of the salvage, which is sort of the most expensive case of beer I think I've ever bought. Um, it was the beginning of seven years work. Um, of course, there was more work than I'd bargained for. <laughs> um, <laughs> What an extraordinary day. We've been with the Wooden Boat Guild. I'm dying from cold. <laughs> and on the way home, we have stopped. And here we are I'm in the middle down the hill. of the Human Rangers, getting oh, absolutely oh. There's, a really, there's a really important thing you need to look at. Brown snow. Uh-oh, don't touch the brown snow. Oh, this is so beautiful, so amazing. What do you reckon? Love it, the snow. This is amazing. Oh, I mean, snow. Stopped on the side of the Huon Highway in a snowstorm. Luke, you should see your hair. Can your I see my hair? Yeah. It's proper snow, Mum. I know. Wow. And here we are at the end of our wooden boat journey for today. Thanks for watching so far. Pop a like on this video and if you can, share it so that others can join in our love for wooden boats. See you next time.